Hey y'all, welcome to the channel. Today on the channel, I've got King Arthur gluten-free measure for measure flour. And if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that right now, this is the flour I grab to the most as far as a blended mix. I like using it, not a sponsored post, just one of the flours that works well for me. So today I thought we would pull a recipe from their website. I'm super excited to try it and I've not done it. So definitely sit till the end to see if I screw it up anywhere or if it's one that you need to make at home. We're gonna make gluten-free bagels from scratch. We're gonna see if these are some of the best gluten-free bagels and you need to try this recipe or maybe you just need to leave it sitting on the website. Totally my opinion on this. If I make any mistakes, guys, leave it in the comments below on what you think might improve them. That being said, at the end of the video, especially when it's bread, I like to pop back in, even if it's a day or two later, and give you my thoughts on how the bread is lasting. I'll try freezing one and we'll thaw it out and see how it toasts up after that. We're gonna see if this is an easy recipe or if it's a difficult one. Guys, at this point, please consider subscribing, sit back and relax, and let's make some bagels. Okay guys, so you're gonna need a mixer for this. I'm gonna use the stand mixer. The directions say you can actually use a hand mixer, but we're gonna mix this for about three minutes. So I'm gonna use a stand mixer so I can walk away from it. I do have the recipe here. I am gonna refer to it, so you'll probably see it next to me the whole video. A um, Couple things to note is that if you go to the recipe, the dough says to use their gluten-free all-purpose flour. So you have to keep reading to the notes to see that they've adjusted for the measure for measure flour. And there are a couple measurement differences, so you need to make sure you read that. The other thing is I kind of go back and forth between baking from weight and baking from volume as far as measurements. So I did a little bit of both on that because their recipes even do a little bit of both. When it's a teaspoon of yeast, that's not a weighted amount, but yet the flour and the milk is. So I'm gonna go back and forth between that a little bit. So that may affect the end result. Um, if it does, it does. We'll just see how it goes. So for the gluten-free measure for measure flour, I've weighed out 330 grams of the flour. So we wanna put that in our bowl. Next thing we're going to add is some brown sugar, light or dark brown sugar. You want two tablespoons or 27 grams. We're gonna add some yeast, which is instant yeast. This is one teaspoon. We need to add some salt. It's one and three quarters teaspoon of salt, and I'm using fine salt, just the regular salt out of the shaker. I'm not using kosher salt or anything. So use whatever fine type of salt you need, but it is fine and, and not the coarse grind. Measure for measure flour, of course, already has some xanthan gum in it, but we are gonna add some more to that. We're gonna add half a teaspoon and this is one of those differences that they're all-purpose flour, you need to add a teaspoon, but for the measure for measure, you only need to add half a teaspoon. Again, all the ingredients are listed below and the full recipe will be linked in the description. Once you have all the dry ingredients, you wanna take your paddle, not the whisk, your paddle. We're gonna put that on. And I'm going to mix it until combined, probably about 30 seconds or so. So let's do that. I can see right now that that brown sugar in there does not want to break up. So let's go in there and check it. Let's see what that does. So I'm still finding a little bit of brown sugar that doesn't want to break up in here. So if you're using two tablespoons of packed brown sugar, you want to make sure you break that up before you put it in here. It'll make it a little easier for your mixing. 
And then of course the rest of it will dissolve into the batter. Once everything is blended, we need to add our milk. And this is one of the ingredients that the measure for measure flour differs from the all purpose gluten-free flour. You wanna use one and a fourth cup, which is 285 grams. And I checked my scale and it seems to be calibrated, but 285 grams actually looked like in between, just over a cup. So I actually kind of cut the difference. So it's not quite one and a fourth cup, but it's also a little bit over 285 grams. So we'll see if that seems to make a difference or not. And you want the temperature to be lukewarm. And the directions do not say what lukewarm is. Lukewarm is between about 98 degrees Fahrenheit and 105 Fahrenheit. So if your milk is cold, you're gonna wanna warm it up a little bit in the microwave, do 20 to 30 second increments until it's the temperature you need. And I'm using 1% because that's what I typically have in the house. So if you usually have 2% or whole milk, I'm sure those would both work. Um, I don't know why they wouldn't, but I'm using 1% today. So I'm going to add it in here and we want to mix it on medium to medium high speed until it's a very smooth, thick batter according to the directions. About three minutes. So let's turn it on and get it blending. We're about halfway through the beating time of the three minutes. I think I'm going to scrape the bowl down. It doesn't instruct us to, but I think I'm going to do that just to be on the safe side and get a good mix in. It is pretty smooth so far, so that's a good sign. Okay, it's been three minutes, so let's lift this up. The batter looks pretty smooth, so let's clean this off. And I can hopefully show you guys what it looks like. All right, so here's the batter. Of course, it's all pushed to the side, so we wanna get that all scraped down. We don't need this, so let's push that out of the way. And then it says to put in a lightly greased bowl. So I have a bowl that is bigger than what my flour was a minute ago. And I think I'm gonna, I've got the canola here, but I think let's spray the bowl with cooking spray instead. That'll give us a light spray. Now we need to put our dough into the bowl. And guys, we're getting ready to do our first rise. So that's gonna be about two hours. I don't know if this makes a difference, but I'm gonna to try to smooth it out just a little bit. And pull it all together in one mass. Right, it also says to grease the top. So that's why I think this is gonna come in handy. So I'm gonna spray a little bit over the top. We need to cover this for two hours until it's visibly puffy, which gluten-free, you know, yeasted breads, they're not gonna double in size like your wheat counterpart. So about two hours, this should be much more airy and it should be visibly bigger. So we wanna cover this and two hours from now, we'll uh, see what it looks like. Okay, so it's been just over two hours so we now need to shape our gluten-free bagels. And to start with, I'm going to get a great big cookie sheet and you wanna line it with parchment paper. And this makes six medium-sized bagels, according to the recipe. They're about three and a half inches each. So this is probably bigger than what I need, but we'll use this just to give everything some space. Hopefully it'll make it a little easier for me. It also says to coat the parchment paper with some oil, so I'm gonna lightly spray it on top of it being parchment paper. 
We're gonna put this off to the side. The next step is to put the dough onto a well-greased surface. So I'm gonna use canola oil, I think, for this. This is probably gonna be a mess to clean up, but so we'll see how that is. I'll try to remember to let you know how easy it is to clean up. So let's put this on. I'm gonna spread it around and then we'll turn our dough out and see what it looks like. Let's slide this back a little bit so hopefully you guys can see the dough and what it looks like before we keep moving. So there's the dough. You can tell it's risen. Of course, it's not doubled in size because it doesn't have any gluten in it. And it says we need to turn the dough onto the grease surface, knead it gently until smooth, and then we need to divide it into six balls of dough, about 103 grams each. And I've got the scale back here, so we'll move it forward. And I am gonna measure those by weight because I'm not great at making everything even and let's try to get them as even as we can. So let's turn it out and get it kneaded and get the dough broken up into those 103 gram dough balls. Okay, so it slid out nicely. Let's knead it a little bit with well-greased hands. I don't think I said that, so let's do that. And we'll grease some more as needed. So you may see some edits where I've gone and washed my hands. And remember, there's no gluten, so it's not gonna knead like regular bread would. It is super sticky, even with my greased hands. All right, I feel like that's pretty smooth and I really didn't do a whole lot with it. What, 30 seconds or so? So I'm going to wash my hands and then I'll get this separated into dough balls and I will probably put more oil down on my cutting board just because I think it's gonna need it. So I think one thing that might help us out a little bit with the measuring is to get yourself some kind of little bowl and we will zero out the scale after we put the bowl on it, but we'll put a little bit of oil in the bowl, we'll get it measured out, and then hopefully we can just dump them out back onto here and maybe not have, uh, keep our hands a little bit cleaner and our scale clean. So I think we're gonna do it that way. So let's get these portioned out. I think a pastry brush is gonna help spread my oil around as well. I've got my bench scraper, so let's see how this goes. Probably should have greased that. Okay, so I've got six portions of dough. We need to shape them into bagels, so I feel like I'm gonna have to keep washing my hands because it's all over me sticky and I wanna, you know, I want all of this washed off so when I dive into it again and start shaping, hopefully I can keep most of the dough in its place in the dough ball. So I'm gonna wash my hands again, grease them up again, and we'll start shaping these. Okay, hands are all greased up. It says to cut the dough ball, and that's just like what you would do with regular rolls if you are making rolls. And you wanna to try to form it into a tight circle, so you wanna put your whole hand over it, cup it, and then keep your hand on it. You're keeping your hand on the board and just moving around in a circular motion to make it into a ball shape. So I'm hoping I can get two or three of these done, and then I'll probably have to re-grease again. 
They are sticking to the board still. So I may need to grease the board some more. Slide it into the part that's actually got more grease on it. Maybe that'll help. I do feel that this is gonna, one of those recipes that you're gonna need to make two, three, even four times before you're comfortable with it. I think there's a lot of little steps that are not difficult, but I think you've gotta figure out your own flow. That one did much better for me. As did that one. So it's definitely partly about having a lot of oil on your hands and making sure your board is oiled. Okay, next we wanna make them into bagels. Right now they're just like a roll shape. So we wanna shape them into bagels. So I'm gonna grease up again. And we wanna take a finger and poke a hole in it. So make sure you are super greased down. And then once you're to the bottom, go ahead and just work it around to form a hole, which this is not working well at all. Let's figure out another way for this. Okay, so we have holes in each of our bagels and we tried doing it with grease fingers and I felt that I got sticky every time I did one. So what I did is I ran my hands under some really warm water and then did it and it was much easier. So I would probably go with the water method as opposed to the oil method. So this one looks like a train wreck. So we are gonna have to form that up again. So I'll use my wet hands to do that which is working well. So you may want to try, instead of the oil method, if you feel your bagels aren't shaping, you might want to try some water. Plus that's not going to continue to add more oil to the bagels, which we don't want greasy bagels. All right, now we have to move them over to our parchment paper. So let me move some stuff out of the way and we'll see how that goes. Okay, I've got six bagels. Let's grease this down one more time. Actually, you know what? Let's rinse it and then grease it down one more time. Okay, I've got this rinsed. I think I'm, first I'm gonna try one with just the warm water on it and see if how that does, and we'll grease it if we need to. Let's move it over. We'll go back and shape stuff as we need it. I don't know if that did really well with the water, so let's try greasing. So we've used our bench scraper to move all the bagels over. It did a really good job greasing it and moving it over. We do need to shape up the bagels again, so I'm going to wash my hands one last time, leave them wet, and just reshape with wet hands. I think that should work as opposed to the oil. The one thing I would say is all the moving is a lot. So I think what I would do is roll your bagels into the ball, then place them over on your sheet, then put your holes in them. That way there, once there's a hole in it, you don't have to move it again. So I think I would do that step and not follow the directions of the recipe. So let's get these shaped back into bagels and then we'll do the final rise. Okay, wet hands, shaping the bagels one last time. Smooth them out a little bit if you feel you need to. Rewet your hands if you need to. Okay, so everything is shaped as Bagel shape now, as good as I can get. We're gonna need to cover these and do a final rise. The instructions just say to cover. I think what I'm gonna do is take some plastic wrap, 
and I'm gonna get a piece large enough to cover everything, tear it off. I'm gonna spray it lightly with some cooking spray. It doesn't say to do this, but as sticky as this dough is, I think it'll help. So let me do that. Let's see. Maybe we can even use some of this excess oil that's on the cutting board and not have to spray much more. So let's try that. Let's take our plastic wrap and rub it all over the cutting board. And now that's lightly covered. And let's just do this. And we'll see how that works. So now that they're covered about 45 minutes in, I'm going to get the water boiling and get that ready to go. So we're gonna jump ahead to that while these rise. So the bagels have a few more minutes that they need to rise. So while that's happening, I think we'll go over the next step just so we can be at the point where when it's time to boil them, they're ready to go. So I've got the electric skillet out. I thought those would be a good use for it because I need something big and relatively shallow to, to boil the bagels. So you wanna grab you know, your big skillet that might have nice deep sides on it. You want about one and a quarter inches of water, according to the recipe. So it's gonna take about eight cups for this. And that's what the recipe says. So I've got four cups in here now. I'm gonna add the other four. And then you're gonna need three tablespoons of light or dark brown sugar that has been packed. We're gonna put that in there and bring it to a boil. And I'm assuming what this does is this will help the bagels brown in the oven because that sugar is gonna dissolve and get on the outside of the bagel and then that will caramelize some in the oven. So I'm assuming that's what that's for. So when I start bringing this to a boil, I will put this in there, give it a stir, let it dissolve and come up to a boil. Let's talk toppings because while the picture in the recipe shows toppings on the bagel, it doesn't actually tell you from what I can tell and I've read it three or four times, how to do the toppings. So I've got multiple toppings here. I've got some poppy seeds. I've got some minced onion. I've got everything bagel seasoning, which I make myself. So if you want that video link, it will be down below in the description. I also have everything bagel seasoning minus the sesame seeds because that is something that Tara cannot have in addition to the gluten. So that's another reason I make my own because I can make it up to this point. I can give her her own everything minus sesame seeds and then I can add sesame seeds to mine. So the point at which you put any toppings on, should you want toppings, would be after you boil them. So when once they're boiled and put back on the pan, that's when you wanna put your seasonings on because it's gonna stick. So I'm probably gonna do a couple plain and a couple everything and maybe an onion and a poppy seed. We'll see uh, when I get there, but they will definitely not all be the same. So we'll get to boiling the bagels in just a minute. So our bagels have gone through the second rise. They've been about 45 minutes to an hour and they're looking pretty good. I have one here that I don't know if you can see on video or not, but there is a pretty good crack through it. And that was probably there, I'm sure, before I covered it up to rest. So we're gonna see what that does. I don't know if it's gonna crack there or not. It may be a disaster, it may be fine. The other ones look pretty good especially the ones that I maybe took my time a little bit more and smoothed out with my wet fingertips. So definitely I would not skip that step. I've got my water almost up to a boil. So as soon as it is, we will start boiling these. You wanna turn your oven on to 450 degrees and give it an extra five or 10 minutes even after the buzzer goes off and tells you that it's preheated. You really want these hot when they go in the oven. So make sure you give it a good preheat. So once this is boiling, I guess we can take these off. So I think oiling that plastic wrap helped. So don't skip that step because we didn't have anything sticking to it. We're gonna use this same baking sheet to bake the bagels themselves. 
we're gonna do, I think I'll do three at a time. You wanna do two to three at a time. So I think I'm gonna do three since it's a good size. We wanna boil them for 60 seconds, flip them, boil them for another 60 seconds, then move them back to here. That's when you wanna put any toppings. We'll do the other three. So let's get all that stuff done and then we'll get them in the oven. Let's see the best way to do this. I think we're gonna use our bench scrape and see if that works. I don't think I'm gonna be able to pick them up. Yeah, they're pretty sticky. Since these seem pretty sticky, I'm going to grease this and we'll see how easy we can get them into the water. All right, I've coated both sides with some nonstick cooking spray. And we're just gonna trial and error this and see how it works. Got a wooden spoon and it does not say to do this, but I'm gonna see if I can't get those holes to form a little bit better again. I've got my timer set for one minute. Okay, let's give them a gentle flip. Not the easiest thing to do. Put those holes back in them again. Another minute. Going to turn my pan around to make it easier to get to the next ones. We'll take these out and then I'll add these and then I'll top in between. Let's get these topped. I'm gonna do poppy seeds on this. Let's see if everything sticks. They seem to be sticking just fine. I'm gonna go pretty heavy on mine. Now we have to get these baked. The directions say to bake it for 20 to 24 minutes until they're golden brown and rotating the pan halfway through. So I'll probably do 10 to 11 minutes, rotate the pan, another 10 to 12 minutes, depending on what I need. I'm gonna get these in. It says to eat them slightly warm. I don't know how I feel about that. I feel like part of the baking process with bread is letting it cool. So we'll see when I actually cut into one. I will probably cut into one of the planes, probably the ugly one, we'll see. But let's get these baked off, give them a taste today, and then test them tomorrow and maybe the day after, after one's been frozen. Let's get these baked. So here are the baked gluten-free bagels. They are nice and golden, so I can't complain about that. The onion that was in the seasonings is a little dark, so that's probably gonna be a little bitter. We'll see how that is. Um, might have to knock some of that off. The poppy seeds seem to be okay. That'll be a taste thing as well. We'll see how that goes. But they are nice and golden. I am gonna let them cool for probably about an hour, so I'm gonna take them off the pan, put them onto the rack, and let them cool. Uh, I do think that's important to let them finish cooking through or baking through um, as they cool. So let's go ahead and do that, and then we will give them a taste on day one and see how they came out. Okay, so the bagels have been cooling for about an hour, hour and 20 minutes or so. So I've got one of the plain ones. I'm gonna give it a 
cut in half because I'm only gonna try half of this. We'll let Tara try the other half when she gets home. So it's got some good air bubbles in there. So our yeast did its job. They're not super fluffy, but they're also not near as flat as they could be. They are nice and golden. It smells like bagels in here, which is a good sign. <laughs> the actual crumb of the bread is good because there's bubbles throughout. It's got some good bendiness to it, which I'm sure is not a good bread term, but I mean, it appears to be bread and not it's not breaking apart. The cream cheese is spreading across it nicely. So I think we should give it a taste. Okay, let's try it and see. It's got a good chewy bagel texture to it. The outside isn't as crisp as uh, bagels can be, but this is also not toasted, it's, it's just plain. It doesn't totally taste gluten-free to me, which is big for me because if I'm eating something gluten-free, I don't want it to taste gluten-free. Tara certainly does not want it to taste gluten-free since all she, that's all she can eat. So I think it's got a good taste to it. There was a little bit of trouble making them. You know, I didn't like poking the holes in the bagel, but we worked around that, learning that a wet fingertip did better as opposed to a greased one. Uh, with all the oil that I feel could have been added to the recipe as we were you know, shaping them. I really don't think they taste greasy. That's a good sign. I've got more bagels over here. So of course, tomorrow, I'm either gonna pop back in with a video or at least a picture so you can guys see, uh, so you guys can see what day two was. It will be toasted at that point. I probably won't eat it, you know, just plain. And I'm also gonna freeze one tonight and I'll probably freeze it, you know, tonight, tomorrow, and then I'll probably thaw it Sunday morning and try it again uh, and see how it works that way. But what do you guys think uh, with all the changes that I made or what few changes I made? Do you think this recipe is worth making? Leave it in the comments below. Have you made this before? Let us know down below. Guys, I'm gonna keep eating my half of the bagel and I'll see you guys in just a second with some more thoughts on how this recipe came out and how it works a day or two later after the initial bake. Okay, so here's one of the gluten-free bagels that I made yesterday. And I had it in a Rubbermaid container all night. It's the Everything Bagel, so let's give it a test. It's been probably, it's almost 8 a.m. and I made them yesterday afternoon in the video. So I think I finished them about 12. So, you know, we're not 24 hours out, but let's see what this is like. So it feels like it definitely hardened up from yesterday. It's not near as soft. So I'm gonna move you guys down to the counter and we'll see how it cuts. And then we're gonna see how it toasts up. So here's the bagel, let's give it a cut. I always recommend using a serrated knife when you cut bagels to get a good cut and definitely watch your hands and fingers. So there's the inside of the bagel. Like we saw yesterday, the crumb is good. I didn't do it quite in half. So let's get this toasted and we'll give it a taste without anything. Uh, so you guys can get a better feel at how it is because of course I'm gonna add cream cheese and adding cream cheese or butter is definitely gonna change that taste a little bit. So let's give this 
a pop in the toaster and see what it looks like. Okay, so they toasted up pretty good. They're a little darker. I wouldn't say it's super dark until it's dried out. So now we just need to give this a taste. So I've got the plain half of the bagel. And let's try it. It's got a decent taste. I actually think I could have toasted this just a little bit longer, but I didn't want it to get too dark. Uh, texture is still good. Taste is good. It needs a topping for me. I mean, I'm gonna put cream cheese on both sides of it, but I think that's pretty typical with bagels. You're gonna use a topping. I don't think I would have tried it not toasted at this point, but I think it held up well for one day. I don't know if I would leave them out of the, out of the uh, freezer any longer than that. I think I would have, you know, typically I would have packaged them all the day I made them unless I knew I was having one today, like I did this time. So we need to do one final test. I threw the rest of them in the freezer yesterday. So I'm gonna wait a day or so, try it again, thaw it, toast it, give you my thoughts and my final thoughts on the full recipe. So we'll be right back. So it's now Tuesday morning. This has been in the freezer since Friday. And when I freeze my bagels, especially if it's gonna be for longer than a couple weeks, I do like to wrap them in aluminum foil as well as plastic wrap, just to give that double barrier of freezer burn protection. So let's open it up. This has been on the counter for about an hour and a half or so. So after freezing it, lots of the poppy seeds have fallen off because they are now in the plastic wrap. Texture wise, it's pretty hard. It could partially still be frozen, I guess. So we're gonna cut it open, toast it up and give it a taste. So there are all the poppy seeds that have come out into the plastic wrap. Let's cut the bagel. Looks good on the inside. So let's toast it and see how this does. Okay, so here's our toasted bagel. Nothing big. It's toasted really well around the edges, the middle is not as toasted as bagels with gluten in them tend to be or other gluten-free bagels that I've seen. Not sure what that's about. It is slightly darker, but not as dark as some things. It is, you know, toasted out as far as texture, so I think we're okay there. So I'm gonna put cream cheese on one and leave a little piece uh, without cream cheese just so I can taste it and we can see how they are. So let's give this a quick taste and then we'll go over final thoughts for the recipe itself. So I feel like the bagel's a little chewier than it should be. Not, um, almost like it's the starches in it. It's not a bad thing, but it is a little chewier than I expected. Try a little bit with the cream cheese. That bite was better, so maybe the chewiness I got from the first part was where the bagel wasn't quite thawed out um, before I toasted it. I don't know. Still a good taste. I still think it tastes pretty much like bread, which is nice. Uh, it does have a good texture. It's got some air bubbles in it from that yeast. It's, it's a decent bagel. So as far as the best gluten-free bagels, I wouldn't say that, um, but I do think this King Arthur Measure for Measure flour mix has done well with this bagel recipe. There are a few things, again, about the bagel recipe that I think you should change. Um, for one, if you're gonna use toppings, you need to do it when they come out of that boiling water. Um, that doesn't say it in the instructions. The other thing is read the full directions because of course the measure for measure ingredients were at the bottom of the recipe in the tips area. Not super sold on that, but originally I'm sure the recipe was developed for their all purpose. Uh, the dough balls, when we were dividing them up 
it's too hard moving them around more than you need to. So if you make this recipe, after you make those dough balls, put them directly on the sheet before you put your hole in the middle of the bagel and shape it. That'll make it easier, it's just less moving. And wet fingertips did a better job for me as opposed to oiled fingertips for shaping those bagels. Taste, it's pretty good. I definitely think if you're looking for bagels that have a good taste, that are gluten-free, I think this is a good recipe to try. Guys, that's all I have for today. Please leave any comments below or maybe some recipes that I should tackle so you guys don't have to. Thank you again for watching. I hope to see you in the next one. We'll see you then.